Before I get started, I'm going to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakadash, Yahweh, that's the name of the Heavenly Father in Hebrew, Yahweh Shai, being the name of his only begotten son in Hebrew, and the Rakakadash being the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for teaching the whole world this truth. And honors to all the brothers that's pushing this truth to the four corners of the world, risking their life and freedom to do so. And shout along to all the believers in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai that's returning to him during these last days so that he will have mercy on them in his time of judgment. Now this lesson here, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to bring out a couple of scriptures, but I'm going to show a string of video clips for our people who still don't get it. I'm going to call this white validation. So for example, if you see a black business, you might hear people say, I don't know about that business. I don't see no white people going in there. But if you see a bunch of white people going in there, you'd be like, yeah, I know they're official. I know that business is legit because I see a lot of white people going in there. So that's white validation. Like we need the white man to verify that something is official or something is real. But that's really foolishness when you think about it because who is the white man? The white man, not the most high. Who is he to validate something for us? Like we don't need the white man's opinion or the white man's okay to say that something is so. Now we're going to get started with our first scripture, Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So this is prophecy right here, that this gospel, this doctrine, the way that we are teaching under the great millstone will be preached in all the world and unto all the nations. Then the end will come. So when it says this gospel, the way that great millstone is teaching, it's new to the world. The world never heard the Bible presented like this before, the way that we presented it, starting with the elders of Great Millstone and all the brothers that come under them. Nobody ever heard the Bible preached this way, and it made way more sense this way. Because when it says this gospel of the kingdom should be preached to all the world, it's not talking about Christianity. Christianity been around for hundreds of years. It's already spread through all the world into all the nations. And the end ain't came yet. Ain't nothing happened with Christianity. But the way that Great Millstone is presenting it, once it spreads to all the world, now the end is coming. That's one way we know that's the correct doctrine. And what's that correct doctrine? That the Lord has a chosen people, that it's the Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, and what else? Salvation is only for the nation of Israel. Like people say salvation is for everybody. That's not true. Because we're the only people who need saving. The people you see here the Native Americans, all the Hispanics, the Negroes. We're the only people who need saving. What the other people need saving from? Saving from themselves? And what else does this action include? That all the other nations on the world gonna go into slavery under us, especially the Edomites, the so-called white people. And what else comes with this doctrine? That Yahweh Shai, the only begotten son, Yahweh, the heavenly father, and all the holy angels are so-called black men. They look just like us. And that Yahweh Shai, he not the soft, sweet Jesus that these Edomites pushed in our mind. And we're going to see that at his return. So that's just gospel. Gospel means good news. So this is good news to these people here. Because we ain't had no good news in over 500 years. So the good news is that we are the chosen people. The Bible is for us. The Lord is going to have mercy on us. And only we can receive salvation. And everything that happens to us, we'll be rewarded for. So that's this gospel that's being preached in all the world for witness to all nations. And what's the main way that this word is spreading? Because the elders of GMS and all the elder teachers, they've been out in the public side teaching for 10, 15, some 20 years. Then what's another way? The internet. There's a lot of wickedness on the internet. People get distracted and do a lot of BS on here. But the main reason that the internet came about it was to do the Lord's work. The Most High had these white Edomites use the power of the technology that the Most High gave them to create this internet so that during the last days, this truth could spread like a wildfire all over the world. Because you got GMS in Germany, GMS in Rome. You got brothers in Hawaii doing the same teaching. We upload a video in just a couple minutes. People in Europe, Australia, India, anybody can watch these lessons. And that's how I came into the truth. I didn't come across no brothers in person. I came across this truth surfing the net all over YouTube. 
running across different brothers. Then I found Great Millstone and the people that teach under them, where I got the full understanding of the truth, more than just us being the chosen people. So this gospel, the way that GMS presented it, us being the holy people of the Most High, will be preached in all the world via the internet unto all nations, then the end shall come. Because you see, we had a mass awakening starting around 2016 to about 2019. A bunch of people started finding out that they was Israelites. And even besides us finding out, a lot of these other nations of people, the white people, the Arabs, a lot of these other people, they found out through these same brothers that we are the chosen people and they pretty much are nobody. So once the whole world started to hear this truth, once it spread, then the end started to make itself manifest because now we in the end. Look at all the stuff that's happening. Stuff that ain't never happened before. Now I went a little longer than expected, but I'm gonna get on with these video clips. That came from Africa while France ruled Louisiana arrived. Check this out. And I want you to pay close attention. Between June 1719 and January 1731, 16 slave trading ships arrived in Louisiana from the Senegal region. Six ships came from Judah. What? What, what was that? Yeah, let's, let's say that again. Six ships came from Judah. Hmm. Hmm. Judah? Where is that at? Where is Judah at? I ain't never heard of where, where's Where did I hear Judah? Oh, Judah's in the Bible. Oh, Judah is the tribe that the Messiah was to be a part of. Oh, Judah was the tribe of King David. And it said that six tribe, six ships, excuse me. So to say that Christ is white when he is clearly black is, is nonsense. This is just this is just deception by my people and and lies to hide because because they know how important it is. They they know how important the the real Jews are. And they have done everything that they can to hide their identity from them and to cut them off from being a nation. So with that, I I see that my video is getting long. I uh, may not even be able to upload this. I may have to redo this. Hopefully not. But with this, I'm going to I'm gonna end the video and I'm going to say shalom. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you. Israel, it's time to repent. And I just heard that you black people that was stolen from Africa to America, that you don't know who you are. You are the children of, of Yahweh the children of Israel, you have to come back to your homeland, here to Zion, to Jerusalem, because as the Gentiles, we do need you. We need you to come and pray because you are our saviors. You the one that was chosen by Yahweh to live in this land, not the Jewish people, it's you. Remember the 400. I was a Christian missionary for years, but there came a time in my life when I realized that what I was taught about the Bible was a lie. In my confusion, I cried out for help. I met an Israelite who introduced me to the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, who is described in the Bible as having hair white as wool and eyes red as fire. Yes, the God in the Bible is black. I'm grateful to witness the end of a 400-year period of slavery foretold in the Bible of God's people, the Israelites in this new Egypt. The God in the Bible is black. Get into the scripture, you're going to know who's who as far as their nations go. And uh, I'm an Edomite. And uh, my forefathers then deceived this whole fucking planet. Pardon me. I'm working on my mouth. But they deceived this whole planet. And I could care less about all the other nations that they've been deceived. You know what I'm saying? But what gets me is that they deceive the most highest people. The most highest people. Do you not understand? Do y'all get that, what I'm talking about? 
deceiving the most highest people, people who are uh, kings and queens of this planet, of this whole world, of everybody who has a heartbeat on this planet. They are the true, they are royalty. True royalty. So that's what I call white validation. White people telling us that we're the chosen people. White people telling us to repent. And I'm going to get a couple more scriptures. And we've been saying that it's only us that the Lord is dealing with. He's not dealing with any other nation of people. That's why we got this here. Psalm chapter 147. We're going to start at verse 19. He sheweth his word unto Jacob. His statutes and his judgments only to Israel. Remember, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. So he only showed his word, his statutes, his laws, and his judgments unto Israel, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Verse 20. He hath not dealt so with any nation, and for his judgments they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai. Because he's not dealing with any other nations outside of Israel. For his judgments... His law, his covenants, he didn't make it known to them. It wasn't for them. Now I got to go to Romans chapter 9 real quick. We're going to start at verse 3. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. So he said his brethren who are his kinsmen according to the flesh. That's a bloodline. So my kinsmen according to the flesh who are Israelites. So Paul said his kinsmen, his brethren, are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants. That's the old and new covenants, only for the Israelites, his kinsmen according to the flesh, and the giving of the law. The law was only given to the Israelites, and the service of Yahweh, and the promises, the promises of mercy, salvation, the adoption, to be sons of the Most High. That's only for the Israelites. Whose are the fathers, and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all, God bless forever. So, this last verse here. Who are the fathers, of whom, concerning the flesh, Christ came. So, tie all this together with verse 5. My brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, whose fathers, Paul and his brethren's fathers, and of whom, as concerning Christ came. So, Christ came in the flesh for the fathers, of the Israelites, Paul's brethren, his kinsmen according to the flesh. So Christ came only for the bloodline of Israel. So now we're going to jump to the last scripture. Revelation chapter 2 verse 9. I know thy works and thy tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. So the first part of the scripture says, the Lord knows our works. He knows our tribulation which also means suffering and troubles. He know that the struggle is real with us. In our poverty, he know we are poor people. He says, but thou art rich. And what are we rich in? We rich in spirit. And he says, I don't know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. Because them Jewish people that say that they're the Lord's chosen people, them just white people, them Edomites, they're not the Lord's chosen. Now, which one looks authentic? Is it these fakes here or these down here? So those who say they are Jews but are not, they are the synagogue of Satan. They are not the Lord's people. They are on earth to do Satan's work. Now last scripture. So this being the last book of the Bible, in Revelation, meaning to reveal, meaning that there'll be a lot of stuff revealed. Chapter 1, Yahweh Shai, the only begotten son, he revealed to himself and how he looks. Chapter 2, the Lord is saying that those who say they are the people, they are not the people. Then Revelation chapter 3, verse 9, the Lord says, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, these Edomites, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. So the Lord saying, those Edomites who say that they the chosen people, but they not, these elite bankers, he going to make them come and worship before our feet. So they going to bow to us and worship the ground that we step on. And they're going to know that it's us that the Lord loves. That is the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans that the Lord loves. Not them. Nobody else. And then we see what the video clips I just showed. You got Edomites admitting that we're the chosen people. You got them admitting that they know who we are and they know that they're the Edomites. 
but that's just the first part of this prophecy. The next part is everybody's going to know. And the next part after that is everybody will come about to us and worship the ground we step on. So that's part of revelation, part of the great revealing. But that's all I want to bring out today. Until next time, Shalom.